today, quick take on decentralized identity um, and how it is important you know, to the blockchain industry itself, but, but definitely to the world. So the first part about decentralized identity that's pretty obvious is the privacy capabilities. You know, that means the CCPA, that means the GDPR, you know, the things that businesses are required to follow in certain areas if they are holding user data. And very important is the uh, liability that, that you have if you're holding, particularly if you're holding a lot of user data, because you're, you end up creating a, a honeypot for anybody that would want to use that data, to seal that data, you know, e even if it's just to embarrass you, decentralized identity helps you to protect the identity of customers and your employees. The data itself by and large is not going to be stored on your servers. It's going to be stored by the customers themselves. You know, it's decentralized to the customer. And another piece are uh, atomic and granular factors. Basically, this means that all of the pieces of your identity can be separated. That is your first name, your last name, your your actual physical address, social, uh, your date of birth. That these things can be separated and provided individually with a level of proof to uh, someone you're wanting to do business with. The fact that I don't have to give them my entire passport or my entire driver's license is really powerful. And beyond that would be those same factors, but derived data. That is uh, not my birth date, but that I am over 18 years of age, or if I'm, you know, wanting a discount that I'm, that I am over 65, it can be stuff like voter eligibility that we, we determine that you are, if you're in the U S that you're over 18, you're a resident of a certain district could be the county you're in, even though that's not on your driver's license, you know, the city state is, but the county can be derived. And some of those are really important because you can expose what is necessary legally without exposing the source data. I don't have to give you my actual birth date. You only need to know that I'm over 18. The next piece that is very interesting is once these factors are in place, that we have the ability to reuse them. A business that is adopting decentralized identity can see, okay, I don't have to uh, get a, a passport or a document verification on every single user, even though they might have done this for some other company in the past. I mean, almost everyone certainly has that's in crypto as an example. Um, but a lot of other systems as well, that cost is much, much lower because we don't have to go to the third party to get the verification. You know, the, the, the verified data is already there from a source that you trust as a third party. And on top of that, the fees that are collected, even though they are lower than if it was a brand new, um, original verification, uh, those fees can go in part to the the company the business that paid for the original verification of that person another big part is and when you're talking you know if you're very dogmatic and want pure decentralization the, then decentralized idea identity can do some level of that but you're going to have a third party verifier that makes a business of checking a passport or checking a driver's license and they have all the systems to verify that this is uh not a counterfeit or anything else. The other side of it that uh, a lot of people don't look at would be self verification. That is the user can verify things themselves. I can, I can prove to you that this is my email, that this is my Twitter account or other social. I can prove to you that, uh, as far as you're concerned, that my nickname is Joe. The other, other bit of it is a company that can integrate their own agents as verifiers that is you know let's say I, I have a health healthcare organization and i have a bunch of clinics when someone walks in the door i can have my people that are at the desk you know verify you know that okay this really was i you know i actually saw this person's driver's license and i saw them they are this person and th those verifications can also be included so that you can basically if someone doesn't provide the type of verification you need you can do it on your own the next bit is proof of human. And this is a concept that has a lot of different layers, right? Um, but it's a, a verifiable and measurable proof that a user is a human, is not a bot, is not impersonating someone else, and is the actual person that you think he or she is. That this is Joe and this is the Joe. When we're rolling out, we don't want to make it so that only technophiles can adopt this. It's organic. It's very understandable to normal people. They don't have to understand how it works. They just have to understand how to interact with it and how and uh, how to use it. 
And all of this, uh, you know, really for a business, when you're talking about adoption, not only do we think it's cheaper to use, but it's, it, this is probably the biggest thing that's, you know, been consistent for the past decade, which is data breach, which you have every single large organization um, has had breaches. The problem is they're holding all that data. It's really a liability. They're not, you know, they aren't Facebook. They're not advertising to these people, right? Maybe they're selling the data, which is right worse. Hopefully they're not, but probably, I guess a lot of them probably are. Um, so one way or another, to reduce costs, risks, legal liabilities, and, and it's in the end, it's better for your customers and better for the business. And then another key component, which is smart devices, and that's uh, the ability to apply identity to any internet smart device, uh, IoT device, which would be you know handheld, mobile, or a sensor even. And the reason that matters is because uh, there there are so many of these out there, and uh, they're going to be tied to humans, and some of them aren't going to be tied to humans, but they are going to be uh, given access to things that are particularly sensitive. And so you're going to need to know that this device really is the device it says it is. The other side of it is integration. And so you're talking about, you know, you really need something's a RESTful API because integration is going to be one of the most important pieces of this. You know, if, if you need to use the identity to uh, log into a website versus open a door, it's a, you know, that, that you're going to have to be able to integrate with traditional systems as well as blockchain systems. We're going to be publishing the, the API soon, but you know, right now we, everything is RESTful API, anybody who's integrated and documentation is available upon request. Factor will soon be open sourced and we'll be rolling out various uh, features. So that was the quick take. Hopefully it was fast enough. Thank you.